What is up guys and we are going to build a car from scratch. So what I always highly suggest is choosing something that is a big body car, usually from the Toyota lineup. So we have cars like the Samurai, the Carrot, the Burner, uh, the Sensei, the Royal. These are all great big body cars and they work perfect for the beginner setup. So what we're gonna do is grab a Carrot 2 I haven't played with this car in quite a long time. So uh, yeah, if you guys wanna go ahead and dress the car up, you can. We're not really gonna touch that. The car is pretty fine where it's at. But what we wanna focus on is Dino Stand and you're going to use the ultimate tune. That way you can tune up everything. So what I want to do is start from beer scratch. So here at the bottom of your screen, you're gonna have the reset all button you're going to click that if you're on controller go ahead and hit the assigned key to reset all your parameters with the suspension all right so now we're starting with a clean slate and another thing i like to do is reset the wheel setup as well so we're doing this off of straight scratch we're not using any reference points or anything like that so the car stance is pretty fine where it's at if it's another car and the, the stance is like with a big wheel gap or something like that. You could go ahead and change your spring length, but in the meantime, don't worry about it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be touching here is the front toe. You want that front toe to be towed out. Um, you don't have to do it all the way to um, negative one. I like mine's between negative 0.5 to about negative 0.20, so we're gonna leave it at negative 0.30, okay? This is gonna help you with your turn in on drifting and hold the front end stable while drifting now camber you don't want it to be super excessive you can fight that with caster and make it work i like my camber around negative five and a half to negative four so we're just going to throw it right here at negative 4.83 your front sway bar you're going to increase this up to about anywhere between 25 to 45 this is going to help you with the understeer of the car and turn in so it's going to make things very stable now with caster caster is a big thing um this provides the force you back feel in the wheel but also the self steer in the car now you don't want anything above seven degrees you don't want to put it at zero because then you'll have no force feedback and the wheel will not self steer at all so i highly re recommend with logitech's around 4.5 and better wheels you could go up to about seven we're just going to throw it at 5.3. All right, so now we have the steering axis. Now this controls like your knuckle adjustment and your uh, lower control arm values. So what we're going to do is put this at around 12. It provides a good feel of loading up in a wheel. If you don't want to touch this and you're, you're not too like informed on what this actually adjusts, just leave both this and the kingpin at 10 but I like mine at 12. It makes the wheel load up uh, better. And if the 4V back is too strong when doing this, if you increase it too much, you can bring your kingpin angle down a little and that'll help. So now we're gonna put steering angle at 65 max because we're gonna utilize all the angle that we can. All right, and like I said before, if the force feedback is too heavy, you can bring the kingpin down a little, but uh, just leave it at 10. Now Ackerman. Ackerman is a huge thing. It's always a debate in the game, but this is actually your percentage slider for your parallel steering. So at 0%, you have full Ackerman, which is about 10 degrees of Ackerman, which is really crazy. So I'm trying to see if you guys can see this, but the front wheels are not parallel to one another. You can see the left one is turned more than the right. So this is gonna help keep the car stable and self steer but it's gonna pull you into the corner, limit your angle and speed, cause you're gonna be scrubbing the crap out of the other wheel. Now if you go to 100%, now you're at full parallel steering. Now you can see here, both wheels are at the same exact angle. This is gonna give you a lot of speed, but it's gonna make the car a bit twitchier. But if you can control this with your other settings and your alignment, you're gonna run outside lines. The car is gonna handle amazing. But what most people like to do is run between zero and to about four or five degrees of Ackerman. So every 10 numbers you go down is one degree in real life. 
What I like to run is about two to three degrees. So we're gonna drop this down to about 70 and leave it right there. I don't usually run in the 60s, but 70 is about as low as I go. All right, so now for the rear anti-roll bar, we're gonna run a very small amount. This is gonna help keep things stable and not jumping around, but also provide maximum rear grip. Okay, very, very simple. Now the next thing we're gonna touch here is the rear camber. You don't wanna go crazy stance boy on this. You want it from zero to a little bit positive. So we're just gonna slap it at 0.13 because what happens is at angle, you want the wheel to be flat. So this is gonna help soak up that and bite really hard. Um, also the toe and the rear, you want this as like positive. So between 0.15 to 0.50 is a good area. We're just gonna slap it at 0.44. This is gonna provide some good forward bite at angle. So when you need to accelerate and push out of a corner, that toe is gonna help you grip up and keep things stable as well. So now on to wheels. First thing I always do is just hit up the wheel track, make sure your stance is dialed. You don't want things looking goofy. So we're just gonna fix the front. The rear is poking quite a bit. So we're gonna bring that in some, make sure it's not uh, poking through the fenders there. And we got a nice little drift set up. We are rocking 100 adhesion. And the front tire pressure, you always want the front pressure higher than the rear. You don't want it uh, any lower. This is my personal preference, and it's almost a common trait in drifting. The front tire pressure, you want it to scrub as much as possible. So it helps with your steering inputs. I also like running a staggered setup. So we're just gonna drop the whip down a little bit more in the front than the rear. Now horsepower for these big body cars, the lowest you wanna run is about 400. Um, I always say between four to 600 is like the sweet spot. So we're gonna drop this at 497 and this thing is gonna get it. Uh, I highly, highly recommend running the clutch base setup. This is gonna allow you to maximize your diff settings as much as possible. Well, it makes it a little unpredictable sometimes at lock, but this is kind of like my go-to uh, for my preload power and coast. Final drive, we're gonna drop this down. It was at a 420. Now that we got a bit more power, we can stretch out this gearing um uh, and bring it down so the lower the number the final drive the longer the gear ratio as far as brakes go we're gonna run uh, a front brake bias with a higher percentage you don't want to bring your brake torque down too low because then your handbrake won't lock up uh, abs on so we can left foot brake and launch control is for top 32 so if you want to gap people put it on if not, leave it off. We're just gonna leave it off. We don't, we're not running a top 32. And that's pretty much it, guys. We're gonna go ahead, jump into uh, a track here, test this car out and see how it does. So I highly suggest running 100 adhesion. 90s is okay for tandeming, but it's gonna make you rely on a slower reaction or a hydrosis or life flight. Run the outside line nice and clean. I like to pull the handbrake a little on some tighter transitions just to stabilize the rear end. Got a third gear, gonna let off, tap the brake, let off, brake, handbrake, clutch kick. Get those back wheels turning. And this thing is running buttery smooth. Now the gearing could be shortened for some, but kind of like it right where it's at, where I could just leave it in third and kind of forget it, much it if I need to. But as you can see with my hands as well, I'm not going one hand over the other, keeping my hands uh, opposite ends of the wheel and letting the wheel self-steer and self and the brake, handbrake, just power through here. 
and as you can see it didn't touch dampers um i tend to think that the dampers on the ultimate setup are actually really good for each car in the game they provide a lot of feel and a lot of the cars deserve a lot of bumps so if you feel like you need to change it go ahead but uh i like where mines are so just letting the wheel soft see yourself Clutch kick, keep her going. And that, my friends, is a perfect lap around the Bisu. And we are good to go.